Greetings to all. Now, our regular press briefings and regular meetings here at the embassy. And thank you that on Saturday afternoon, you are following closely what happens in Ukraine and uh, spreading the truth about what happens in Ukraine. So the Russian offensive continues now for the three days. In the last 42 hours, uh, Russia launched cruise and ballistic missiles on Syria, attacked Ukraine with aviation, tanks, and artillery. Contrary to uh, Russian government's uh, versions of them putting a pause, not putting a pause, I mean, we didn't see any pauses, and all Ukraine has been under full-fledged war for the past three days from the beginning when it started until the moment we speak uh, uh, with you. And all of the major cities as well as small villages are under attack all the time. So Russia has continued also its hybrid forms of aggression by sending subversion and reconnaissance groups to undermine peace and security in our cities uh, and their residents. We have those groups throughout Ukraine, our brave citizens and our armed forces are finding them and we have uh, regular reports on them being caught, detained and destroyed. Cyber attacks also against the websites of the governmental institutions continue. This is something that preceded the war. This is something that uh, continued during the first day and we uh, see it on a large scale. According to reports obtained by Ukrainian uh, security service, uh, the occupant forces are also hanging out actively gas masks to local militants and the Russian military in Donetsk Oblast. So we uh, you know, are making this information public uh, to warn that there might, might be a possibility of provocation uh, and uh, you know, that there are different versions of what could, could they do uh, up to blowing up some industrial tanks with chemicals. The enemy also, of course, planned to accuse the Ukrainian armed forces for the sabotage uh, but we want to declare that unlike Russian occupiers, Ukraine does not resort to such methods. Our armed forces operated in the most responsible manner and they are defending our country while also trying to be very, very uh, responsible about the Ukrainian citizens uh, for a very, because of the very simple fact. They are there to defend Ukraine together with Ukrainian citizens. Um, the Russian troops continue the severe shelling of both military infrastructure, but also civilian objects, and civilian objects more and more. Kharkiv and Kiev have been, have been subjected to shell fire. Many people have lost their homes, especially during the past day and night. Uh, as we reported yesterday, the Russian side attacked the Serpent Island in the Black Sea. They seized Chernobyl nuclear power station. And as a part of southern Kherson uh, uh, region, including the North Crimean Channel, the water channel to Crimea. The aggressor also destroyed the dam of Kiev Reservoir, which threatened thousands of civil deaths in Kiev. Uh, and uh, uh, we are monitoring the situation closely, but there could be a risk of massive flood. Russia missiles are now aiming to destroy the logistic infrastructure bridges in and around Kiev. Water reservoirs, Vyshgorod Dam, which can lead to the accident on Zaporizhia nuclear power station, power, power station. Russian continues to attack also from the sea. And on February 25th, Russian warships deliberately attacked two civil vessels under the third country flags, uh, namely Panama and Moldova, in the Black Sea approaching Ukraine, which actually constitute a flagrant violation of the international law of the sea. Now, I would like to focus more today on the crimes against humanity that all of your correspondents who are, and we would like to thank them, all the brave men and women who are with us in Ukraine, uh, recording and, and telling the truth to the world about what's going on on the ground. Uh, but we are absolutely appalled by the Russian crimes against humanity, which we see throughout Ukraine. In the last 20, 72 hours, the Russian army attacked kindergartens and orphanages. Right behind me today, we have put the images of the horrific scenes of the Russian war in Ukraine and Russian war crimes. Yesterday, we reported that Russian hail multi-rocket launcher system hit residential infrastructure in Okhtyrka town, uh, 
in Sumy Oblast, and several children were heavily wounded. I am saddened to inform you that a seven-year girl who was um, wounded, she died, unfortunately, as the result of this. The Russian armed forces destroyed 80% of the residential building in Shastya town, in Donetsk Oblast, and our heart goes to the residents of Shastya. The enemy hit an orphanage in Vorzel, and uh, there were 80, uh, 50 people inside, 50 kids inside, and as I informed you yesterday, thanks God, all of them uh, were not harmed. The village of Sartane in Donetsk Oblast, as well as the city of Sumy, were subject of intensive shelling, which destroyed dozens of private houses. The Russian side attempts to hide its crimes against peaceful residents. With the Office of Attorney General of Ukraine, we are collecting all of this, we are recording all of this, we are preserving all of this, and we will immediately be transferring all of this to The Hague. Responsibility for these actions is inevitable, regardless of how much time it will take us to defend our country. Of course, we have losses on the Ukrainian side. And as of February 26, we have lost many of our brave uh, sons and daughters. We lost 198 people who were killed, including three children. 1,115 were injured, including 33 children. The civilian losses amount to 38 people, out of which two were children. And then I'm only telling you the losses of people who are killed or seriously wounded. But as you can imagine, or as you can see from all the footage and, and videos that we have from Ukraine, you know, millions, millions of Ukrainians and their lives are affected by this war. People spend days and nights in the shelters. Babies are born underground. Killed children do not go to school. Many are trying to relocate children to either the Western Ukraine uh, or to uh, neighboring countries temporarily, and men are returning home to fight. This is a major humanitarian catastrophe in the center of Europe. Now, I'm also glad to report you that enemy does not do it unpunished. So in the last two days, we have destroyed 102 tanks, 14 fighter jets, 11 helicopters, 15 artillery pieces, one book one system, and 536 armored vehicles of the enemy. And as the result of Mr. Putin's ruthless decision to send his soldiers to this senseless, unjust, unprovoked, and uh, totally criminal war, 3,500 uh, 3, Russian men will not be returning home. And uh, yesterday, our Vice Prime Minister for the Occupied Territories and uh, Reintegration of uh, Donbass, Irina Verishuk, appealed to the Red Cross for the help so that the Red Cross can actually help Ukraine to return these uh, uh, corpses back to Russia. We are very thankful for the support that all the anti-war coalition is providing Ukraine. 73 countries, as I said yesterday, and nine international organizations are in that coalition. And we are receiving additional weapons. We are receiving additional ammunition. We are receiving financial and humanitarian support. And most importantly, we are moving together on a strong path of sanctions. And I would like to use this opportunity to once again call on everyone to be firm in all the sanctions and introduce and implement all the sanctions that Putin and Russian Federation deserve for what they are doing to Ukraine and what they're doing to peace. So the sanctions should include severe financial sanctions, we believe all financial Russian institutions should be sanctioned. Uh, they should be dis disconnected from uh, the majority of the civilized world. They should be out of the majority of the international organizations. Because as we saw yesterday during the uh, Security Council of the UN, uh, they again vetoed a decision that called to stop the aggression and called for peace.
So I would like to finish by saying that the spirit of Ukrainian armed forces, National Guard, Border Guards, uh, all of our brave men and women, territorial defense, ordinary Ukrainians remain very high. As we said during the past year, as we said when we realized and we saw already all of you with, with, with all of the world that Putin has made a decision, which he has been debating for quite some time. And as we see during the past three days, we are very resolute in defending our country. Uh, people are returning to Ukraine, even though it's very difficult because there are no flights that go into Ukraine, but people from all over the globe go back home to defend our country. And uh, we will continue to do so. And uh, we really hope that all civilized world will not only be with us like they are now, but with that we together will be able to stop Mr. Putin and return peace to our country, return peace to Europe, and uh, allow Ukraine to continue as a whole sovereign country, peacefully develop as our people would like to.